Today I'm going to show you how you can use Proxmox to create backups of machines, transport those backups around, restore them from USB, and restore them from a network location. And we're going to look at this on a single system. So if you have a cluster, of course you have some additional options available to you. As well, we're not going to be dealing with a Proxmox backup server. Uh, that's a completely different topic that would of course handle most of your backup needs but this is just geared towards people with a single Proxmox box. When you look at one of your VMs, this is going to have a backup option and your backup option you can run from the context of your actual node or you can go to data center and you can have, if you have multiple machines or just a single machine, a schedule that would be able to back up and you can define the schedule for when and which particular machines to back up, as well as how to compress them. I typically use Z standard because it is actually fast and good, like they say, and whether you want to stop the VM or suspend or snapshot the VM when you do this. So let's take a look at creating a backup first. So we're gonna use our MySQL instance here, and we're gonna go ahead and run this backup we're gonna put it on the local directory. And as you can see, this has 225 gigabytes of space available to it right now. We're just gonna have the notes as host name. Click backup and it'll run the backup here and write it to the local directory that is hosting this particular VM. One thing to note is the path here, forward slash var forward slash lib forward slash vz forward slash dump is the default place where you will be putting your backups. So the actual backup will be living in this path and we're gonna be using this again in just a few moments. When it says task okay at the bottom, that means it's completed successfully so you can go ahead and close the dialog window. Now, if you wanted to restore from this, you would just click this click restore. You could change some of the settings if you wanted to. And also you could also give it a different storage location to restore to. We're not going to go ahead and restore it yet because this is something that we want to demonstrate how you can move this around. This is especially important if you are upgrading your system. Maybe you're getting some new hardware, something more power efficient, and you want to be able to move from one box to another box there's gonna be probably two pathways for you to use that. That's gonna be either USB or a network share. So I've remoted in to the remote SSH on the Proxmox instance over here. We're gonna do LSBLK and we can see we've got SDI here and SDI is two terabytes. This is a little SSD drive that we're gonna to use to write this backup to. Now you can just double click and see this path again here. So we're gonna take this path right here without the tick. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna CD to this directory. We're gonna do an LS inside here and this is gonna give us the notes, the log, and also the actual backup. If we do an LS hyphen LA, we can see the size of this and this is roughly 38 or so Gibby bytes of space that we've got allocated to this. So we need to move this over onto our actual backup drive and that is SDI. We don't have this formatted yet, so we're gonna use ButterFS to format this SSD really quickly. So we're gonna mkfs.btrfs and then forward slash dev and forward slash SDI. Make sure you do get the right device here because SDI is the right device issue. If you see here, there's no partitions created on this and you can cause problems for yourself if you overwrite directories and drives that you don't want to. So we now have this formatted. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to mount this. So the first thing we need to do to mount this is make a directory and we're gonna create that in forward slash mount and forward slash backup. And then we are going to mount forward slash dev SDI to forward slash mount forward slash backup. Okay, now if we do a df hyphen h, we can see that we have our backup drive here of 1.9 terabytes on dev SDI. Got all of these things here and we are going to just take this first piece and we are going to MV this star and then we are going to put that in forward slash mount forward slash backup forward slash. 
and it will copy those files over to that directory. Okay, so now if we do an ls in here, you'll see that we don't have anything, but if we do an ls hyphen la in mount forward slash backup, you'll see that we've got those three files there. The next thing that you need to do if you need to move this from system to system is go ahead and unmount the backup. So that command is umount and then forward slash mount forward slash backup. Now when we do a dfh, we can see that we do not have backup mounted anymore. It's now safe to unplug your USB drive and transport it to your new system. You'll note that we also have a unique identifier, 105 here, as well as the date and timestamp, so that this does match up with our 105 MySQL instance over here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to also create a backup of CentOS utils. However, this one, we're gonna to move to a network location. So let's go ahead and create a backup of the CentOS utils here and click backup. Okay, and we got the task okay, so the job is done now and we now have the backup here. So if I do an LS, you'll see that we've got our new VM ID, which is 104 over here and that matches up to our CentOS utilities. If we do an ls of the forward slash mount directory, you can see that we've got the backup, which was the USB drive that we used earlier. So we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna do that with mkdir hyphen v forward slash mount and forward slash net backup. And this net backup is going to be what we use to mount our remote file system. Our remote file system that we're gonna mount is gonna be over in TrueNAS scale. This is a probably pretty popular option here. Now, we do have an SMB share created, as you can see here already, for this particular directory, but we're gonna create a new one, and this is going to be a share for NFS. So we're gonna click over here. We're gonna go to NFS shares, click add. We're gonna go down and specify the backups folder, and we're gonna click save. Now, if we go to data sets and we go back here, you can see that we have both SMB and NFS shares enabled now. So the command to mount the remote directory from this TrueNAS instance, if you look here, you can see our IP address is .62 for that. So we're going to do mount hyphen T NFS, and we're gonna do the IP address, which is 192.168.1.62. Colon forward slash, and if you look here, you can see on the shares, if we expand out view all, the actual location. So we're gonna copy that, and we have two of those there, so we don't quite need that, oops. And then forward slash mount and forward slash the directory that we made, which was net backup. and that is NFS and not NFT. It's figured out that we have 25 terabytes and 4.6 terabytes used, so 20 terabytes available on our net backup folder. And so if we do an LS inside here, we can see that we've got our net backups. We're going to go ahead and make dir another directory, and this time we're going to put it inside our remote folder, but we're also going to call it Proxmox. Okay, so we're gonna take the VZ dump and we're gonna move it again. So we're going to MV VZ dump all these files into this directory here. And so after a little while, we can see that it's finished the copy over to our remote destination. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and actually delete these. and then restore each one of them. Now let's go over how you can restore from the USB. So the first thing that we're gonna do is remount our USB drive. So if we do lsblk, let's say that we've plugged this into a new location. We can see that we have the SDI drive still present here. And so this is what we're gonna actually mount. If we do LS in here, we can see that we don't have anything present in here currently. So let's go ahead and CD to our mount directory and LS and 
Then we're gonna go ahead and restore our USB connection to our backup. Let's say that you have gone ahead, replaced the hardware, reinstalled, and now it's time for you to remount. You would go ahead and recreate your directories for backup or your net backup location, whether you had used a USB location or a network location for your backup originally, or possibly if you've used both. We're gonna go ahead and start with our USB location. So we're gonna mount and we're going to do dev SDI and then forward slash mount and backup. And now we're gonna CD into backup and we're gonna LS. And we can see that we've got our VM 105 here. So to restore VM 105, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the QM restore command. QM restore, we're going to take the ZST file here. Also, you can specify the VM ID, which we're gonna go ahead and use 105. If you needed to iterate past 105, suppose you had waited some time and created another 105, and so you were past 105, say you were at 115, then you could actually specify 116 here and it would create a VM ID 116. But we're gonna go ahead and specify 105 for this one and then you can specify the storage that you want to use. And we want to use our fast storage pool, which is actually called storage. So hyphen hyphen storage, and then the name storage, which you would change to whatever name you wanted. That could be local also, if you're just using like a single SSD or something. And it's gonna restore from our USB drive. And you can see that it'll go through the process here. And you can even double click on this and get the same information that we're getting in our screen over here. Okay, so when it's back to the command prompt over here, or when it says okay in your task viewer, you're done. And we can see that our MySQL instance is back. If you've upgraded your hardware, you would wanna go ahead and possibly change, uh, maybe to host or something like that if you have some really great hardware. Quemu 64 if you want maximizing your cap capabilities for having uh, cross-platform without any sort of issues. KVM 64 also an option. So now let's go ahead and mount our backup location that we have over on the TrueNAS share. So we're gonna mount type NFS and we're going to type in the IP address 192.168.1.62 colon forward slash mount forward slash backup forward slash backup and then we're going to specify the directory forward slash mount forward slash net backup and so we're going to go ahead and restore this to 104 so if we ls really quick we can see that we've got our zst file here which is the actual backup image itself and we're going to use the qm restore command again this time it's just from our network location paste the file we're going to name 104 as the vm id we are also going to hyphen hyphen storage and specify the storage pool we want to locate this on which in our instance is called storage as well and we'll let this process complete here And there we go, we now have our VMs restored and it should rename it to its former name. You can check and make sure that it is the correct CPU type here. And if you need to adjust that, you can do that over here. And we should be able to start this now and start this now and have them both fire up. So it does look like this is working as expected. So that is pretty much it for here. I hope you guys are able to use this to good effect when you need to back up and restore, whether it's from a USB drive or a network location, your Proxmox virtual machines, this can work for you just like this. Everybody have a great rest of your day.